Greetings everyone and welcome back to Bush Gardens Tampa. Today we will trek through Animal Connection and get an up close look at a few of the animal ambassadors that reside here. First we come across our fine feathered friends, so sit back and enjoy these graceful and beautiful birds and I will see you on the other side. Now, if that wasn't an absolute cuteness overload, I don't know what is. I'm the type of person that can stand there watching penguins for hours and miss out on a lot of the other opportunities the zoos have to offer. So getting back on track here as we head up the path, we will pass by the home of a slender snouted crocodile and a newly reopened mixed species exhibit and a peek through the bushes into the home of the flamboyant flamingos. Here we will also discuss some of the tour opportunities that I highly recommend you to look into if you have an extra day or some time on a trip to Bush Gardens. First of all, Animal Connections is the hub for up-close animal interactions and a place to learn about Bush Gardens conservation efforts and real-world opportunities for us to help as well through one-of-a-kind experiences. We learn here that the slender snouted crocodile is on the International Union of Conservation of Nature as an endangered species and are labeled critically endangered, with an estimated 500 adults left in the wild today due to deforestation, meat, and hide hunting. They grow to a length of 13 feet and can weigh over 700 pounds. They can be found in freshwater rivers, lakes, and slightly salty coastal waters. This habitat currently reopened on our latest visit to Bush Gardens and it houses a sloth, iguana, and spoonbill. I am unsure yet whether this will be the permanent animals that we will see in this exhibit or if we'll have rotating displays like some of the other exhibits down the road. So here are just a few of the tours that Bush Gardens offers and that are in or near this area that we're exploring. The Penguin Insider Tour allows us to go behind the scenes and get an inside look into the African penguin habitat at Penguin Point. Here we will learn about the conservation initiatives Bush Gardens supports surrounding this endangered species in South Africa, as well as gives us an opportunity to get up and close with these warm weathered penguins. On the Aladabra Insider Tour, we will get an up close encounter with one of the largest species of tortoises on the planet. There is also the opportunity to feed these gentle giants, and we will see this exhibit towards the end of this video. The Sloth Encounter. On this animal interaction tour, we will get opportunities to feed and engage in hands-on training with multiple species of sloth. We also learn about sloth conservation, their lifestyles, and diets. Throughout this video, we will see the sloths in many different areas, both indoors and outdoors, and this will include Hoffman and Linnaeus sloths. The new keeper for the day is a four hour tour that takes us behind the scenes to meet the animal care specialist and watch as they train and work with many different animals. 
Here we will learn the necessary skills that are used to care for these endangered and exotic species from all over the world. This tour includes up-close meetings with flamingos, tortoises, and sloths, and a personalized name tag is also included. On the Animal Ambassador Insider Tour, we will join animal care experts on an interactive training session and see some of these unique animal ambassadors up close as they demonstrate their wild behaviors and adaptations. On this tour, which we will experience here in a few moments, we get up close looks at Flash, a red-footed tortoise, as well as a three-banded armadillo. With some of these demonstrations, there are the opportunities to touch the animals. Afterwards, each individual will be given a glass full of krill, an opportunity to walk into the flamingo habitat for an up-close experience with lesser Caribbean and Chilean flamingos. Personal photography is allowed in all these experiences, so let's listen in for a moment to our Animal Ambassador Inside Tour. Animal Connections. Uh, this is Flash. Flash is a red-footed tortoise and she is one of our animal ambassadors. So animal ambassadors, uh, basically what that is, is these animals that live in this area come out of their habitats very frequently for encounters. So whether that be for this tour to meet you guys or maybe traveling to a local school for a program or maybe even across the country to appear on TV. So all of these animals that you see in this area are animal ambassadors that meet new people every single day. So you guys notice that Flash is really comfortable hanging out with us. She's just having a snack. Um, you guys might know that when turtles and tortoises get a little bit nervous, maybe they'll tuck their head and their legs inside of their shell to protect themselves. As you can see, Flash isn't doing that. She's just hanging out, enjoying the sun, enjoying her apple. So she's pretty used to spending time with us. In fact, she's actually been doing this her whole life. I think she was actually hatched here at Bush Garden. Boring. Those little hairs, like I said, are actually called tactile hairs. So he uses them sort of like a cat's whiskers to help him feel around his environment. And then he's got those cute little ears um, and he has pretty good hearing. He can actually between the nine minute armadillo that we know here in the States and these guys, first and foremost, size. Secondly, is where they're native to. So the nine minute armadillo is obviously found throughout the United States, whereas this guy is native to South America. Well, that was a ton of fun, and I can't recommend the Animal Ambassador Insider Tour enough, especially if you like to get up-close looks and interactions with a few of the animals. If I understand correctly, there are opportunities to see different ambassador animals on different visits. So if you're into such things, it might be worth visiting multiple times. Now, the Flamingo Experience is definitely one of my favorite things I've done in a very long time and I will be doing this again very soon. If you do happen to do this, prepare to get sprayed by water as the flamingos filter their food. But it's all in great fun though. As we step away from the turf, let's talk about some of the animals that we've seen and some of those that we will be coming up on our trek. And one of those animals was Sabrina the Kinkajou were also known as honey bears. This name comes from their often raids on bees' nests, where they use their long and skinny tongues to slurp the honey from hives. Roaming at night to eat insects and ripe fruit, they return in the morning and sleep in their tree holes. Sabrina's favorite treats are bananas, peanut butter, and grapes. We also caught glimpses of young American alligators. In early summer, females will build a nest out of sticks and vegetation, 
These nests can measure 7 to 10 feet in diameter. She will lay up to 50 eggs and cover them with vegetation to incubate for a little over two months. Soon we will catch a peak of the echidna who are native to Tasmania, New Guinea, and as well as Australia. This animal has a beak like a bird, lays eggs like a reptile, spines similar to a porcupine, and a pouch like a kangaroo. They also hunt insects with their six inch tongue. Hoffman's two-toed sloths live primarily in two distinct rainforested regions of Central and South America, which is separated by the Andes Mountains. The rock hyrax have moist and rubber-like pads on their feet, which aids in their agility among ledges and rocks across Africa. The long hairs scattered over their body help orient these animals in dark areas and burrows similar to whiskers. As we heard earlier, flamingos are filter feeders. They will lower their head upside down into the water and move it back and forth from side to side. This process allows them to collect a mixture of both food and water. Gray crowned cranes are known for their elaborate courtship displays that involve jumping, dancing, and bowing. Macaws are incredibly important to the rainforest environment as they disperse the seeds they eat, helping new plants generate. Famous for their problem-solving skills, white-necked ravens have been known to drop food from high places on the rocks below in order to crack them open. They can mimic a variety of noises, including human speech. Screech owls are common on the eastern side of the United States and forage at dusk to find their food, preying on anything that runs, swims, flies, including other birds, mice, insects, and crawfish. The screaming hairy armadillo is native to Argentina. Their name derives from the squealing loud sound they make when they feel threatened. The ground couscous is a nocturnal marsupial that inhabits New Guinea. The prehensile tail and opposable toes on the hind feet help them to climb trees and crawl around on the ground in search of eggs, seeds, and fruit. Turricos with short rounded wings are poor flyers but agile in the trees, where it runs along tree branches using its long tail to stay balanced. These birds can rotate their outermost front toes to access food in a variety of ways, even when hanging upside down. Linnaeus two-toed sloths can be distinguished by other species of two-toed sloths by their darker color on their head and long limbs. Bush Gardens is home to more than 10 sloths. These animals spend almost their entire life upside down in trees. They eat, sleep, mate, and give birth in this position high among the branches. In the wild, sloths can live up to 10 years, but under the managed care, like at Bush Gardens Tampa, they can live into their 20s. One of the residents, Harry, is estimated to be in his late 40s, making him one, if not the oldest sloth in the world. We will often find them sleeping as they spend 20 hours a day doing this. Red ruffed lemurs are a critically endangered species that in the wild can be found in only one small region of the rainforest of Madagascar. Brown lemurs are active both day and night. They have strong social bonds and are meticulously clean animals. After feeding, they groom themselves thoroughly using their comb-like teeth and a long claw on the second toe of their hind feet. An interesting fact. Bush Gardens Tampa is home to one of the 20 zoo nutritionists in the entire world who determines what an animal should eat and manage care in comparison to what they would eat in the wild. And now we will start learning about Bush Gardens reptile and amphibians care. Science tell us that few animals require as strict guidelines for husbandry and care more than reptiles and amphibians. Each species has specific temperature ranges and water requirements in which they thrive. Monitoring the animal's well-being and making sure they have healthy homes is the main function of the reptile amphibian room, in addition to general species requirements. Individual animal preferences are also taken into consideration. Some prefer leaves and mulch to rest upon, while others prefer bark, moss, or stones. Here we'll find the Florida cottonmouths, who have a distinct blocky triangular head and are North America's only venomous water snake. They are semi-aquatic and can live in either water or be found basking on land. The Carolina green anole is sometimes referred to as the American chameleon because of its ability to change color from green to brown. This is the only anole species native to North America. Black tree monitors are designed for a life in the trees with long curved claws, sticky soles, and long prehensile tails that serves as a fifth limb. 
And at the end of the reptile amphibian corridor, we will get to the amphibian breeding center. The sign here tells us that this room contains habitats for many different species of amphibians. Each habitat is customized to the individual species meeting its own particular requirements for temperature and humidity. This meticulous attention to detail encourages excellent health and breeding. Amphibian species have been dramatically disappearing around the world, mainly due to the combined effect of habitat destruction, climate change, and pollution. That's the bad news. The good news is that the zoos around the world have committed to rescuing amphibian species in danger of extinction by creating special breeding programs and reintroduction efforts. You too can leap into action and help save amphibians in your area by simply creating frog-friendly habitats in your own backyard. A few of the conservation efforts they talk about here include Rising Tide. Basically, Rising Tide is a nonprofit research effort to successfully breed saltwater ornamental reef fish. Ideally, this is to protect coral reefs using sustainable aquacultural techniques to raise marine ornamental fish as an alternative to wild reef collection. The aquarium we will see here in this area is a 270 gallon system with aquacultured fish, snails, and live coral. Nothing was collected from the wild reefs. In this tank, we'll also find the first ever aquacultured Pacific blue tang. Other programs include the Sloth Rescue and Rehabilitation in Panama, Rothschild's Giraffe Research in Uganda, Wildlife Research and Rehabilitation in Australia, and Orangutan Conservation in Indonesia. And here, Bush Gardens asks us three questions and gives us answers. What can we do tomorrow? Thousands of shipments of live wildlife and wildlife products, many of which come from endangered and threatened species, enter the United States illegally each year. One easy way we can help conserve wildlife is to make sure we know what we are buying. If there is no demand for these types of wildlife products, they are less likely to be harvested. Who can make a difference? Anyone. What can we do today? Just having a fun day at Bush Gardens Tampa Bay can make a difference. A portion of the proceeds from this merchandise goes to support the SeaWorld Bush Gardens Conservation Fund. And this concludes our day, so thank you for joining me on this trek through Animal Connection at Bush Gardens Tampa Bay. This is Brad, and I will see you where our adventures take us next. Until next time, safe travels everyone.